Saludos. Es hora de que otro desmontaje. Or greetings. It's time for another teardown. This is an odd one. You're wondering... Sombreros. How the hell can you tear down a sombrero? Well, these aren't any ordinary sombreros. If I knock the lights off... They're light chaser sombreros. And I bought these sombreros back in 1986 on a school trip. And the day I brought them home actually was the day my brother was born. But I digress. Fast forward on from there to 1999. And myself and a friend of mine are coming up with ideas for fancy dress for New Year's Eve. Now of course this is the Millennium Eve when you're going to flip over to the year 2000. So we wanted something a bit special. So I brought these down from the attic and I thought, let's see if I can make something good out of these. See if I can do a light chaser. So as you can see around the edges, if I just zoom in, there's wiring around the inside rim. And there's 32 LEDs right around the whole rim of the sombrero. Why does an 8x4 grid? Those then are connected to a circuit board, which is normally tucked away a bit better than that, under, under the hat. It's just on top of your head. That's then run with this cable to a 12 volt battery. We both had 3 amp hour batteries in our pockets. And this cable, which would go down your wrist, so you could easily control it. What we've got here is an on-off switch. And these buttons adjust the speed of the pattern. This one was originally supposed to select between forward, reverse and inverted forward and reverse. As you'll see it doesn't quite work properly. It doesn't flip back to the correct pattern because there's some bugs in the software and basically I ran out of time when I was creating this. The second one of these, the red one, actually completed that on New Year's Eve. I finished soldering it and it was like straight in the car, 60 mile drive, let's get ready to go out. And the other part, the one that the other button then selects between the patterns. I'll go through some of the patterns on there now. Again, you'll see some bugs in this. That's a single two dots surrounding. Sombrero, if I speed it up a bit. There we go. <coughs> that one, which is actually one in two, I was a bit too fast to watch now. As you can see, some of them aren't quite right, they don't read properly. I'll show you why in a minute. But like I said, I've run out of time. Single dot chasing around. Two dots. Lots of dots. Even more dots. Single blade. Wipe in front to back. Two blade helicopter. That's one of the malfunctioning ones. That one doesn't though. That one works properly. You just speed that up. I should be able to change direction on that. No, of course I can't. Slow that back down. So you get the idea. This took some pretty inventive, well for me at least, pretty inventive engineering because of course we have 32 LEDs. If you arrange them, the smallest you can arrange them really is 
an 8x4 grid or a 6x6, these are 8x4. That's 12 connections. And there's not that many connections available on a PIC microcontroller. Not to mention bugger all RAM. This is running on a 16F84. It can't it hasn't got room to store all the patterns. This is years before you'd be able to pick up like at megas and things like that, which you'd be able to do all this single chip. So, how did I do it? If I turn off the green one and switch to the red one. you'll see the board is already out. There's the bottom of the board, there's the connections, the 12 connections, four quadrants, and the eight individuals going out through to the LEDs. We've got the supply and the connection going off to the switches. And that's the board. What we've got is a Dallas DS1075 Econ Oscillator. It's just a programmable clock chip, really. That's clocking this PIC16F84. And that is addressing the EEPROM. It's also addressing this 2 to 4 line decoder, which in turn then addresses one of four segments at a time. And because they address so quickly, they rapidly sweep around, it looks to the human eye, and in fact it even looked to the camera, as though they're all on together. When in fact they're individually being switched, one bank, two bank, three bank, four bank, one bank, two bank, three bank, four bank, very, very rapidly. And it also addresses the four switches. So the four switches use a single pin on the chip. And the chip knows which switch when the, switch, when the chip receives an input, it'll know which switch is actually signalling at the time, so it knows which button is being pressed. So whether you're trying to change a pattern, reverse a pattern, speed up or speed down, this knows which one you pressed. Now, I don't know if it counts as a teardown when it's something you've actually designed yourself, but here's the schematic anyway. Let's go through the mundane bits first. At the bottom you can see there are eight transistors, BC107Bs, and these are directly connected to the data lines on the EEPROM, which should give you a clue now as to how I'm getting so many patterns. Those all connect to the cathodes of the LEDs. Each one connects to four cathodes, one on each bank. The anodes of the LEDs are all grouped together in banks of four, and they go over to the right of the circuit where you can see there's an array of three transistors, all BC107Bs. The rightmost pair are just there as a pair just to increase the current carrying capability, and the left-hand one inverts it. So you can see if the input to the left-hand transistor is high, the transistor turns on, grounds the input to the other two, and turns them off. If the input to the left-hand transistor is low, it turns off. The input to the other transistors floats high and because of the diodes the base voltage goes above the voltage on the other two pins on the transistor and that turns on. So it's an inverting output. And that inverting output comes from this SEM4LS139 which is a 2 to 4 line decoder with an inverting output. Now the input of that SEM4LS139 is two pins which are also matched up with A1 and A0 on the EEPROM. So what happens there is the PIC will keep the other address lines stable and will step through these pins A0 and A1. So it's selecting between the least significant four bytes of the EEPROM. And as it's selecting 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, the data lines are going out to a set of transistors and they're selected by the 74LS139. So the PIC does that very rapidly, sequencing through the four quadrants that make up a single LED state. Then once it's decided it's had enough, which of course is determined by whatever speed you've set it to using the black buttons on the fob, it moves on to the next part of the pattern and does the same thing again. 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And so on and so forth until it reaches the end of the pattern, at which point it's got to jump back and do it again. In the pick, it knows the starting address of each section of the pattern and it knows the length of each section of the pattern, so it knows it's got to go to a certain address and then read a certain set for a pattern and then repeat itself. 
when you choose a different pattern, it'll move to a different part of the EEPROM and keep cycling that out instead. Very simple, very effective, and limited only by however many patterns you can squeeze into that 4 kilobyte EEPROM. Including the inverted patterns as well, of course, because those are stored separately in that chip. I've been hunting high and low today to see if I can find the original source code for this, but I can't. God knows where the files have gone. They're long gone on some old hard disk somewhere. But this gives you a rough idea of the sort of stuff that's on that EEPROM. As you can see on the left we've got the pattern, and on the right the corresponding hex code that would go into the EEPROM, four bytes at a time. Some patterns are shorter, some patterns are longer. And as you can see, 13 years on, it's still going strong. Hope you like it. Perhaps it'll inspire you to do, a, like I said, a single chip version. I'd expect there's at least one chip in the Atmega range that could do the whole thing in one single chip. No transistors, no external memory, nothing. So, thank you for watching. Buenas noches.